Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from the Institution of Civil Engineers. And it's a publication by that organisation and it's called A Guide to the Reservoirs Act 1975, now in a second edition. It's an excellent book it's by the Institution of Civil Engineers uh, Publishing Company. My wife Elizabeth and I looked at the book, we found it fascinating, as neither of us had much knowledge of the law of reservoirs, if, if we can call it that. So it was really very interesting because it's about water, the prime substance that, that we have for life, apart from breathing in the air. Now we've given it a title, a special interest to environmental lawyers, a fascinating area of law with broad implications for conservation and environmental safety. Now I'm reviewing this book just before the general election on the 7th of May 2015. The environment hasn't been the big issue actually in the election campaign, but of course it is a big issue uh, because of what has been happening to the planet itself. Before we have a look at uh, the actual review itself that we've written, let's have a look at the book. Nice big cover, front, but it's a big book, A4 size. There's the spine and then there's quite a lot on the back which you can see. If we have a look at the book itself, I'll go through the back. There, There is in fact part D, guidance on issues relating to the Act, there. But if we actually go to the front, there isn't an index as such or anything like that. You've got abbreviations and various other things and there are references right at the back. But if we go to the front of the book, you've then got, there's the, the main front cover to begin with, and then you've got the various contents in different parts, starting with part A, which looks at the in an introduction. There is in fact a forward to the first edition, which is always worth reading. So very highly um, experienced people have been involved in. And then there's the forward to the second edition, um, which has been uh, author, authored by Martin Dean, Tim Hill and Alan uh, Warren. And there were uh, members of a peer review group as well, who are also listed there. Um, then after that, you've got acknowledgements, things like pictures and so forth. Then you see how the structure is. Part A goes straight into the introduction to the Act, it sets out the purpose of the guide, so that's always important to use, and the content, then various other uh, points, and then you get into the main um, <coughs> Act itself, which is there. This is our Part B. Then, of course, after that, we go through to part C, the statutory instruments, the SIs. Then you've got part, and there's a lot of them. And then after that, right at the end, you've got the guidance on issues, which is there. And that's the book. It runs to 160 odd pages. It's a paperback, as I say, A4 size. So the only thing you need to photocopy, it's not the most difficult thing to, to photocopy. It's an excellent book. If, it's an, if the work that you do is involved in this area, I think you will find it's an absolutely magnificent contribution to your knowledge and your way around the legislation. Because in this day and age, legislation, both primary and secondary, is of great importance. And of course, this type of publication does assist in trying to give you some idea of, of what it all means. Because frankly, a lot of this is very, very difficult to follow. I say that as a lawyer who's meant to understand quite a lot of how the, how the wording operates and what it means. But sometimes we, like everybody else, can have quite big difficulties. But I think this particular publication makes many of the possible difficulties and stumbling blocks you might have, it makes it a lot clearer. This is what we say anyway. Water is the elixir of life. It's fundamental. Cleansing, refreshing and sustaining. No species can survive without it. All of which points up to the importance of uh, this new second edition of the excellent ICE public, uh, publication, A Guide to the Reservoirs Act 1975. ICE being the Institution of Civil Engineers. But make no mistake, this publication is just as relevant to lawyers, environmental lawyers especially, because of, of the subject matter. The new second edition, like the first edition of uh, year 2000, has been published to um, assist all those involved in the application of the Reservoirs Act 1975, specifically its implementation and its enforcement. 
It's been completely updated and the edition reflects the current views and practices within uh, this particular aspect of civil engineering. A uh, concern, for instance, with dams, the safety and operation of dams being directly linked to the safety and operation of reservoirs. And incorporating the changes made by the Water Act 2003 and the Flood and Water Management, uh, Management Act 2010, it reproduces the full text of the, ori text of the original Reservoirs Act 1975 with accompanying detailed commentary. And additional commentary on relevant statutory instruments, the SIs, is also provided together with uh, reproduction in full of these key pieces of, of delegated legislation where the detail is to be obviously found and that's part C. Now as I said before one of the problems is when you have primary and secondary legislation you've got to read them all together to see what the powers are and to, to see how in fact the law takes shape. Um, but what has happened, the subject is of course a very important one, it's had ramifications when we've had flooding and it's had other ramifications over the years. So it is an issue for local and central government and for a very wide range of people. Do note, however, that this edition of the guide is intended for the application of the Act to statutory reservoirs in England only. The guide should not be used in relation to reservoirs in Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. A version of this guide may possibly be produced for Scotland and Wales following um, anticipated legislative developments and of course for Northern Ireland following the introduction there of new legislation for the regulation of reservoir safety. <clears throat> All of that is in the future but what we've got at the moment is an excellent publication for England. And the purpose of the Act is very clear from the outset. It is an Act to make further provision against escapes of water from reservoirs or from lakes or locks artificially created or enlarged. The prevailing approach or ethos, if you will, is that of risk management. We're not talking Rylands and Fletcher here in terms of escape, because obviously that's a tort, but what we're looking at here is specifically the statutory responsibilities. And the point that's made is that the Act, with its various um, statutory instruments uh, and powers, has been created to provide a legal and administrative framework for the construction and management of reservoirs that reduces the escapes of water from reservoirs caused by the collapse of a dam to an acceptable level. We always have these problems. Um, I come from a, apart from being a barrister, I come from a background where I've been an elected member of two local authorities and we've always had um, emergency planning in both Oxford and in Richmond where I've been elected. Uh, emergency planning is important because you can have occasions when there are problems. Certainly in Richmond where I live we have the river so therefore we've always had that uh, main threat of a possibility of flooding for instance. So it does make one much more aware of, of what the difficulties may be if something dreadful happens, God forbid, um, but obviously a collapse of a dam it would be a very important thing, so measures have to be in post. While there's no specific definition of safety then in the Act, obviously you've got other pieces of legislation for that uh, too, health and safety at work and so forth. It, the Act, this current Act, focuses obviously on issues of safety to persons and property in line with its principal aims, namely to encourage the highest standards of reservoir safety and the proper application of the Act by all parties involved. Now let me conclude by thanking the, the three people who authored the book um, and also all the other people involved uh, by saying that this then is a reference document for all who need to understand or apply the workings of the 1975 Act. It's been funded by DEFRA, that's the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, in its current name. And, and this is therefore one of the most authoritative publications available on this specific subject. And it should be considered an essential purchase, certainly by all practitioners in environmental law, if that's the area you're involved in. Nice green cover, there we go, side and then the back. Um, there is a website mentioned at the back, which you can see clearly there, if you want further information. Just reminding you again, the back of it, this is Part D on guidance. Again, I think that would be very, very important for a number of people, showing where obligations are. Then you've got this, a huge amount on statutory instruments, which is Part C. 
you've then got the main act and all its sections there and you can see how it's actually uh, structured uh, and in fact what you have got um, is a very you've got you've certainly got some side comments as well which I think are quite helpful you've also got um, various other uh, notes which go with it you can see some various tables which are listed there as well that's table on prescribed form of record when you're looking at the um, the purposes of the thing you're at the reservoir you're looking at there's an interesting point here which is the definition of water itself which we both found quite interesting when we were going through this and then right at the beginning just to remind you again that's the contents section and then you've got the forward. That's the first edition forward. But if you go to the second edition, you see who's actually involved at the moment. As I've said, thank you very much to all concerned. The Institution of Civil Engineers to be congratulated for this excellent publication. I think it's a great help. And anybody in any local authority area that's got a reservoir certainly should be of the, know of the availability of this book. And also have some working knowledge of what what. Uh, the rules are, where, where the law is, in case there are any problems. It's an area which we don't like to talk about as elected members, and uh, we leave it up to the local uh, officials, but I think it's something that is of importance across the board. So thank you very much to all concerned for producing it. Bye-bye.